Welcome to another episode of Light of the Southwest. I'm Dr. Rick Wodge, and I'm here with Amy Cooper. That's me. Hello, Amy Cooper. Hello, Dr. Wodge. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. We have a, a special guest with us today. Yes, we do. Shall I introduce him? Oh, why don't you? Well, some of you have met him already. He was with us about a year and a half ago. Welcome back to GLC, Max Richardson. Thank you so much for having me, Max. Really appreciate it. It's, Thank you. It's good to have you, have you back in the house. It's nice to be here. It's a privilege to be here with such fine people that uh, are willing to have me on air and, and let me talk about a new vision of Jerusalem, share with them, I hope. Thank you very much. Well, what you have uh, created since we saw you last is actually quite phenomenal. It's a, a very unique form of art. But for people who don't know who you are, Max, what would you tell them about who, who Max Richardson is? Well, that's a good question. Uh, you know, uh, when you go online and people ask you to write a bio on, on yourself, you always find yourself, it, it's, it's not so easy to describe what people want to hear uh, and to find the most pertinent things. But for the sake of brevity, uh, on this program, we could easily fill up a lot of time talking about ourselves, but... Uh, I would really like to uh, key on, sort of align my future, my past, with Jerusalem. And I think the last 15 to 20 years of my life have been defined by my work in Jerusalem uh, as a photographer at the City of David, the origins of the City of Jerusalem, and as a photographer for the Western Wall Heritage Foundation at the Kotel Tunnels which depict the identity of Jerusalem. Uh, so at these two sites, the origins and the identity of the Jewish people, the origins and the identity of, of, of Jerusalem, uh, I've sort of morphed and recreated myself, I suppose. Uh, it, it's a privilege to be there in the first place, but to have the opportunity to try to convey to people the importance of these sites uh, to me as an individual is one thing, but to sort of make some sort of uh, uh, statement about Jerusalem as something that was actually meant for the entire world without sounding like I'm trying to convey or, or perpetrate any sort of uh, uh, new religion. or It's not the idea. Or, or, or convince someone of my religious perspective. That's not the idea at all. Uh, Jerusalem is a place of discovery, and we're constantly discovering there. And we have people from all over the globe coming, just like you bring groups. And each person, each individual comes away with an individual perspective and some fresh idea and some new insight that they hadn't had before. And Jerusalem, that's the benefit of it. That's the nature of it. You asked me how people... What would I tell people about my story? How, how do I describe myself? Well, if I may back up a little bit, uh, I'm, not, I'm a Jew by choice. I'm not born into the, to the tribe, as they say. Uh, and I've been an observant Jew for the last nearly, well, 25 years anyway. And uh, my wife and I, at the time, went to Israel, made Aliyah, uh, with my late father-in-law, and uh, I was there as a photographer, and she was doing data entry, and uh, it, he was doing a mapping project of Jerusalem. So from the very outset, my work was had began in Jerusalem. Now, my training as a photographer was with some very old-style photographic equipment, uh, large format. 8 by 10 inch camera uh, with a couple of hot lamps. Uh, the, the techniques and the systems are very much the same types of cameras and systems that people used in the Holy Land in the 1800s when photography was just becoming uh, actually a medium of any kind, much less an art. But obviously artists 
jumped into the uh, to the opportunity with the new medium of photography. And as Great Britain and France were world powers at the time, I suppose they still are in some measure. Uh, they sent they sent uh, various entourages to the Middle East. They were both interested from a very long history of interest in the Middle East. They both wanted to find how they could contribute, how they could actually exercise authority, how they could uh, identify with Jerusalem. Uh, so these different entourages that came to photograph the Holy Land would obviously have this perspective of biblical uh, sort of romanticism. Uh, their perspective of photography often included uh, the locals dressed in sort of... Uh, uh, sort of biblical garb and uh, they would sort of make a uh, pastoral perspective out of the the imagery that they saw rather than just photographing much like uh, uh, photojournalism of today where you just record what's there they would often romanticize what they saw and try to place imagery in front of the public that would relate to the Bible, that would hark back to biblical imagery. So when I came to, to Jerusalem, I would, had seen these images as a child, just long before I was in photography. And then when I was trained on this equipment that was from that era, literally from the, the 1800s, the early 1900s, my natural inclina inclination was to be influenced by these, uh, these photographs of the 1800s and I came to Israel and, and Jerusalem and saw myself as continuing in that vein. People in the modern sense were not doing that. People in the modern sense were coming with the latest and the greatest, as, as people do. But I saw sort of a purpose in my being trained in that fashion with coming to Israel. And the most famous photographs of Israel and the Holy Land were these sepia tone photographs mm -hmm. of the 1800s that were very beautiful to me and inspired me as a child long before I was into photography. So I saw, like instantly, I saw myself as sort of picking up the mantle, I suppose, and, and continuing in that vein. I can't hardly even believe that you can put your photographs mm -hmm. on stone. And they're so beautiful. Okay. Yeah. In my hand. See this? What is this? That's my favorite. It's a... <laughs> uh, of early first century or so oil lamp? Yes. It's it got was, a menorah on it. It is a menorah. Menorah being the Hebrew word for lamp. Menorah. And uh, where was this? Where was this little lamp found? This is a lamp that I photographed in the city of David. Uh, it's probably from somewhere between the first and the fourth century. And uh, uh, the, the motif on the texture sort of lines on on the uh, on the the thing there on the menorah actually sort of echo the motif of a menorah the the candelabra that was used in the temple. You see how the light changes that. Yes, yeah. beautiful. And as I change it, move a little. Mm -hmm. The reason that I'm showing this to you is we have been uh, telling you for a while you want to watch this program so that you can get your name in a drawing for Max's new art. And this is how you do it. You email us at info at glc.us.com. In the subject line of the email, put drawing. And then in the content of the email, simply put your name, your address, and your phone number. Email. Well, we'll have their email because it's yes. coming. So if you will do that for us, uh, then your name goes in the drawing, and we're going to be drawing from the names that come in within the next two weeks, and we will keep you posted on that, and uh, very exciting stuff. If you enjoyed this clip, please feel free to check out the full version in the link located in the description panel below. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can also connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. As always, help yourself to the diverse array of teachings located on this YouTube channel or on our website at glc.us.com.